When I first used the terminal, I had mixed feelings. First, I thought I would break my computer. And secondly, I thought I now entered the secret world of computer science and hacking. This video is going to be a short video of what you have to know about the terminal, especially if you're a front-end developer. So let's get started. You might have heard different expressions already, like PowerShell and command line, but what are they really? Let's go over the expressions you have to know. The definition of terminal is that it's a text-based interface that connects to your computer. The shell is the program running on your terminal. In Windows, we have two main shells, the command prompt, also called CMD, and the Microsoft PowerShell. On Mac, as a default, we have Bash. But we can also have Bash on Windows, we just have to download it. So if you use a Mac, even though I'm on Windows, this video still applies to you, just focus on the Bash shell. We have some differences between all of them, but more about that in a bit. And what's the command line? The command line is the actual line we are writing on. So as an analogy, the terminal is like a text editor. The shell is like if we use Word from Windows or Pages from Mac, and the command line is the actual line we are writing on. So how does the terminal work? We have the command line, and the path here means that we are in this folder, so at the moment the desktop folder. Here we could write our command. An example could be, this would create a folder. With some commands, we have something that's called a flag, which could be something like hyphen G. This is usually an option or an additional setting to a command. Why should we use the command line in the first place? Usually we use it because we have to, but more on how we actually use the command line as front-end developers at the end of the video. Mostly the command line can be a more efficient way to work. Let's say I want to create five folders. That would take usually a lot of time. But with the command line, I could do it very easily. The terminal is different from anything we usually interact with on the computer. Some of the biggest differences are, we can't redo something that we did, and we can't really use the mouse in a terminal. So let's try out some commands. I use the new Microsoft terminal and have different tabs open. The Windows PowerShell, the CMD, and bash. For the first couple of commands we will use PowerShell because it sounds cool. But the commands will also work on the other two. And as I said, anything I do with the bash shell will also work on the default terminal in Mac. So let's now move into folder one we created here on the desktop. We can do that with cd, which means change directory. And directory is the terminal's expression for folder. And we would cd to folder one. And now we can see we are in folder one. So that's the same thing as if we double clicked on the folder here on our desktop. And now we can cd into our folder two. What we would do if you wanted to go back is cd double points. And this is how we go back between folders, cd double point. Let's try to move into folder number three. And we see we get an error. Because if we have folder or file names with a space between, we have to put it in double quotes. And now it worked. We have relative and absolute path. The ones we used were relative. If you want to use absolute path, we would do it like this. We just write out or like in this example, copy and paste the absolute path and put it in with CD. And this is how we will move to this folder. And again, CD will work in the CMD and in bash as well. So let's create a folder. We will do this with mkdir, which stands for make directory. Again, directory is the terminal's expression for folder. We give the folder a name. And this is how we can create directories. We can do the exact same thing on the CMD. And on bash. A little tip if you use the up and down arrows, you can toggle between the last commands you put in. Now let's remove the directory. We can do this with rm. And we can see the folder has been deleted. Sometimes we can use different commands to achieve the same thing. What we could also do is del. And we can see the same thing happened. 
So let's go to CMD and try to delete folder 6. And we can see we get an error, it won't work. The thing is with these three shells we have different commands to achieve the same thing. So with CMD it would be RMDIR for remove directory and the name. So for the functions we will look at in this video I have a little cheat sheet in the description down below with the different commands for the different shells. But for the sake of this tutorial we will continue with PowerShell. A little tip, our terminal is quite cluttered here. What we can do is write clear and we get a clear terminal. The before actions will still be visible if we scroll up here. So we created a directory, we deleted a directory, let's create a file. With PowerShell this is a little bit more complicated than with the other ones, but this would be the command. Now we can see we created a hide.txt file. We can delete this file with rm and we can see it's now deleted. So we created a folder, deleted it, we created a file and deleted it, but what do we really use the terminal for? 90% of the time we use it to install npm packages or run servers or scripts. So let us open that project with VS Code, that's a gulp boilerplate we did in the last video. In VS Code we can run the terminal from VS Code directly and a classical example what we would do is npm install to install the packages we have here in the package.json file. Let's run the gulp script. We can use gulp script if we write gulp and we can see we get an error. We use PowerShell here and PowerShell has some security settings which prohibit that we run this script here. Either we can change PowerShell settings or we can change the shell we use here. We can do it like this. Now let's run gulp and we can see it works. By the way, a little tip, if you have a running task or a running server, you can start with control C. So this is how we most of the time as front-end developers will use the terminal. Of course, there are many other commands we can do. We can edit files, we can copy files, we can duplicate files. But most of the time, I personally prefer to do that with the mouse and the normal workflow. But this is just me personally. I hope this video helped. If it did, leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.